So I heard that the freeze made a comment concerning the miracle that took place in Dr. Jerry Eze's program in UK and even went ahead to give a challenge. I told you I can teach. Not only did I teach, I challenged your pastors to come and either be taught or debate my teachings with me. They're on. Meanwhile, before he goes about looking for a pastor he's going to challenge, maybe he needs to go back to Reverend Dan that almost finished him off in one of their maybe two or three years ago debate and indeed it was a shame for him because he utterly lost in that debate of who the lucifer is uh thank you very much mr freeze for welcoming my rebuttal could i think which by exp um, extension you can impose your own personal interpretation that's dangerous and obviously that is where your fundamental challenge lies at this point, I want to humbly recommend very strongly that you pick up some real theological training since you are obviously becoming very, very interested in theology. I'm very sure that's going to go a long way to help you. And of course, after this ending remark from Reverend Dan, that the freeze never went back to give re response to what led to this video. So if he's looking for people to challenge, he should go and meet people that are willing to debate and start praying around. But this is not what I want to address, right? I just want us to look into the old testimony, which the parents of the girl granted. Now, first of all, did Pastor Jerry Eze arrange any miracle? I think anybody that would be thinking that obviously is mad. Now. You are more, if you have been with us on this channel, you would have discovered that was the time I covered the video of someone that I knew that came to give testimony of how God restored two cut out fallopian tube. And this was done by the declaration from the man of God, Pastor Jerry Eze. I have no affliction with Pastor Jerry Eze. I don't listen to him. I don't know him. But for anybody to think this man actually arranged this miracle that person obviously is not so i want us to head into the interview of this parents and drop my one or two cents okay so let's just pay close attention as we listen to what they have to say and that will give remark in between their testimony let's get into it does not we are the family we have come to give glory to god for what god has done in the life of our daughter our daughter was born with cerebral palsy and um, as a result she had um, delayed de developmental milestones which uh, typically affected her motor skills. Uh, we joined the NSPPD in 2021. We were trusting God for her miracles and um, this, this situation demanded that we do lots of therapy. This really affected our finances. At some point, we just, you know, gave up because it was too much. Yeah. We could not um, handle the financial obligation that it required. So we decided to relocate to the UK. And um, upon coming here to the UK, my daughter has been confined to the wheelchair. So it's good for us to note here, the first thing is that she was confined to a wheelchair, which means she was not properly working. I mean, if she was working well, there wouldn't have been need to get a wheelchair. Okay, no, I have seen people with this same condition. Some persons, their own case might be majorly, maybe they don't know how to talk well, but in most instances, it's always the issue of, you know, motor ability and motor skills. So for uh, for this one, she was confined to the wheelchair. I want us to take note of that as we listen along. Which made her, you know, be progressed with the little things she could even do before. And um, made her always feel sad and feel bad that she could not, she could not play, she could not be with friends, you know, it, it was just a lot that really affected us as a family. So we went for, NSPPD UK prayer conference in 2023 in, in Excel, right? Yeah. We went and uh, we were believing God for a testimony. And um, even though nothing happened there, we still trust God that God, our time will come one day. We kept joining the prayer altar, kept praying. So again, this shows the have track record of, of attending NSPPD program, okay? Given this timeline. So this is not like somebody coming up from out of the blues and decide to fake a miracle obviously those who attend nspd in uk or you know this family they would have have people that know that knows them unlike when that the freeze was insinuating that 
these people are not known okay so this shows from the interview that they have track record of having been attending this program i mean we have not seen anywhere or anybody coming to so we know this family all this thing they are saying is fake or they are telling lie okay so as far as the story is now whatsoever they are given is authentic provided we've not got to see family member or anyone anywhere coming to counter what they are saying concerning their daughter so let's go ahead i'm trusting god my daughter never misses the testimony like that's usually the time when she's on her way to school she's always always she always takes her phones and she's listening to testimony on the road while she's on a wheelchair so when it was time for a uk prayer conference again in 2024 we were like okay we're not gonna miss it and um, we went over and we as a family we believed god that even though we wheeled our, our daughter in there on a wheelchair we we're not gonna leave there with her mm. on the wheelchair yeah, we're not gonna leave twickenham stadium, twickenham stadium in the wheelchair yes so once again take note of their determination and what they and they remark the media they wheel this baby in and their concern or their determination, their desire is that they're not going to wheel her back. Take note of that word because this is going to be instrumental to what will happen subsequently. So let's listen. Yes, Pastor Jerry, you're really affecting the next generation. She joined in the prayer. And as soon as Pastor Jerry started saying, check yourself, do what you couldn't do before. <laughs> My daughter, things she found difficult to do, which she could not do, she started doing them. The things that she would do when she would fall, she was doing them without even falling. I was like, okay, wait a minute. Something is happening right here. This is the, this, there is a difference right here. And um, I remember left to me as a parent, maybe because we are a private family, left to me as a parent, we just mm -hmm. want to like, okay, so thank God for your healing, let's go home. But my mm -hmm. daughter was shouting, mommy, I'm healed. Mommy, see me, I can do this. I can do that. And she exactly. kept doing it. And she was shouting, you know, everybody could see her doing it. And, you know, we're excited. She was like, I want to give my testimony, mommy. I want to give my testimony. So we took her out. Now for her to have made this statement, this obviously should clear the name of Dr. Jerry Eze because she didn't want to actually come out to give that testimony. All right. She wanted to be sure. She wanted to maybe perhaps just go back home and thank God. All right. One other thing which we might also want to look into this is that could it be that they were caught in the moment? Maybe the baby was caught in the moment that people were coming out to testify and she just been caught in that ecstatic moment and decided to start doing things. You know, there's some kind, there might be some kind of adrenaline push that might actually result to her doing some things which she was not able to do and start doing it now and making that shout wanting to go out to testify you know how baby can be okay this could be also be 18 but again considering the fact that as we'll be listening the parents went ahead to testify that the baby had to trek back home she walked back home which has never happened before that she could not stand for long without getting tired that she had to walk back home there was no need for them to use the wheelchair i think to some extent this could be considered a miracle i mean one thing i will look out for people that claims to work from the wheelchair is what is their initial reactions if i get to see somebody just from a wheelchair just stand up and start jumping just like that without taking some baby step baby step before eventually having the bones to be strong enough to walk i usually suspect that kind of miracle but when i look out at you and we, i mean somebody who have not walked for a very long time when they start working for the first time, you will definitely see it in their reactions, in their movements. That obviously this person is still trying to struggle to walk. Okay. So over time, the bones start getting stronger, start getting used to being able to walk. And this was the case of the guy, if you saw the video. So this is, you know, I, I can't actually tell you 100% sure that this baby received a miracle. It's very possible that she was caught up in that euphoria okay it's very possible but one thing you can't deny is that she was able to walk back up which has never happened before i really wish people could just go back and do proper investigation and try to find out exactly what happened after then okay that is where it matters a lot but if it's to whether we've seen numerous miracles happen in the ministry of jerry is come on we have seen one i have i have given life testimony of what happened concerning this woman okay i will always refer to this because this happened and it happened to someone that i know all right so i'll just leave you to listen to this okay i do want to know what your thoughts are concerning 
these whole reactions but if anybody coming up here to say jerry is a fake that miracle that person obviously don't know what he's talking about so let's listen to the remaining of the testimony now we'll leave you here bye bye and even the people the people beside us that sat behind us were even telling us to go to go to go that it's a festival you know you know so there was no way we could hide so we just literally took her out since then after that time the thing she found difficult to do now she was walking she was not getting tired. Mm. She literally made her way back home without, without the wheelchair. being on the wheelchair. She was not tired. Mommy, I kept asking, are you tired? Are you weak? You know, she kept saying, mommy, I'm healed. Why are you asking me? Mommy, I'm healed. I'm fine. You know, mm. and then the beautiful thing is that she's been even, even challenging before. our faith. Yeah, so, but after the Twickenham experience, the Twickenham healing, we went back home without her being in the wheelchair and she walked with us back home she never got tired she never got weak and that's another sign that you know that came to us that made us know that really she has really, really gotten her miracle really yeah she has gotten her healing you know and we bless god for what god has done mm. in the life of our daughter today i took her for her physio again and um, i remember they were just making comments like oh wow she did this beautifully well oh wow she did this fine that that's good you know and we believe god that god who has begun this would definitely okay. complete it concerning our child pastor jerry won't say those so obviously this comment here suggests that there are still other areas which they are still expecting the healing to be perfected okay now if there's anything i can take away from this is that after that prayer there was a lot of improvement that was noticed from their baby okay and this is a good thing all right 